Hey everybody, welcome to the RV Maintenance and Education Show here at Radio Arizona RV. This is Eric Stark, your host. Glad to be back with another episode, and today's episode is going to be about RV battery maintenance and storage during the winter time, because that's when most people do store their RVs. There is the opposite, where a lot of people store them during the summertime because they go away during the winter time to Arizona, Florida, Texas, places like that. But we're going to focus on the wintertime storage. That's the most important thing. But before we get into the the battery maintenance and storage part of the episode, I want to talk about procrastination for a moment. You know, a lot of a lot of people kind of dig through this. They they have a they can have a hard time getting motivated to do things. And we pr- can procrastinate. We're people, we're humans and we do that. Our our brain has been wired a certain way and sometimes it gets rewired to where we want to procrastinate. You know, we we don't want to do anything. We put things off. You know, we'll answer the phone, we'll watch TV, we'll listen to the radio, we'll do little mundane things rather than really doing the thing at hand, the task at hand that needs to get taken care of. I bring this up because sometimes RV maintenance gets neglected. It gets put on the back burner. You might find yourself the night before a trip or a couple days before a trip really scrambling to get something done. And, you know, this can apply anywhere, but really it's we have to get things done. There are certain things we need to do every day. So if we find ourselves procrastinating, we'd like to take action. Do something about it. Don't just let that become the norm in your life. Because if you procrastinate with one thing, you're probably doing it with others. You know, avoid the little things. Don't answer your phone. Turn off the email. You know, these are normal things. Turn off the internet. You know, do all these different things, you know, so you don't have the distractions. It's not always that easy, but, you know, just be mindful of the little things that can pull you away from the bigger things that are more important. Prioritize things, get your, your activities for the day or your tasks for the day written down on a schedule and knock them out. You know, there's a lot of times with maintenance, it can just become a, a drag to do. You don't really want to do it. Maybe you're going to do a reseal the, the roof of your RV. You, you don't want to do it, but it needs to get done. You know, you're going to do it yourself. Sometimes we can find so many excuses for not doing it. When it really needs to get done, we put it off and then it's on the back of our mind. It's chewing at us. I need to take care of this. I need to get this done, but we don't. So it's just a little point. I, you know, read an article the other day and I thought, you know, everybody probably faces this problem to some degree, some greater than others. I, you know, sometimes I procrastinate and find little mundane things to pull me away from the bigger issue. But, you know, just keep that in mind. We have to get certain stuff done every day. That's, you know, we have things we have to do, chores, if you will. And just like storing our RV, there's things that have to get done before you store it. You know, especially in areas where it freezes, you have to winterize it, make sure there's no water in the water lines, the water heater, the water tank, the things we have to do to protect it. So when we bring it out of storage, we don't have 10 different water leaks, a blown out water heater tank, you know, all these problems. So that takes us to our battery storage. Now, when we store an RV for the winter time, you know, like I said, we winterize it, we do all these things, and this should just be part of the program, you know, getting the batteries ready for storage. You know, a lot of t- a lot of people ask about this, and that's why I bring it up. It's not just some subject I pulled out of thin air. It's, you know, I have customers asking. Um, there's a lot of information on the Internet that's, you know, all over the board. It can be confusing. You know, sometimes you get some of the direction is you get really carried away and go to all these great lengths to store a battery when you don't have to do that much, but you do have to do something. So one of the first things you want to do is, you know, if, if you're going to store the batteries off of the or out of the RV, whether it's a trailer or a motorhome, if you're actually going to take them out and motorhomes sometimes are trickier to get the batteries out than a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. But one of the things to do is just clean the battery, clean the terminals, clean the case that it's in, you know, the battery itself, make sure it's all clean, wiped down. And that's not a big deal, but it can actually increase the discharge rate of the battery. Um, oddly enough, that can happen. So make sure it's nice and clean. And that way, when you go to put it back into the RV, that's already done. If you, you touch it or set it on something, it's, you know, you don't have to worry about it damaging it as much. Although, you know, batteries should only be set on surfaces that you know you don't care that much about something that you're willing to throw away you know an old rag or a towel or whatever or if it's a hard surface something that can be wiped up it's not going to corrode so first thing is cleaning the battery 
which is pretty obvious. Then when you put the battery back in, like I said, it's done, it's ready to go. The terminals are clean and they should be clean when you go to put it back in, whether it's three months later, four months later, six months later. And the other thing too is to make sure you store the battery with a charge. Make sure that battery is fully charged. You know, the battery is going to drain naturally over light or over the, over the time that it's in storage. You don't want it to, it, that's going to happen, but you want to make sure it's fully charged when you put it into storage. That way you avoid that dead battery. It's going to make that battery a better battery when you bring it out of storage. And the other thing too is make sure it's completely disconnected. You know, when it's in an RV, there's always some sort of a draw on it. You know, some bat- some RVs have a battery disconnect switch, which is pretty handy. So you can disconnect the battery completely from the system, or at least it should be completely disconnected. And if that's the case, you could actually leave it in the RV, but disconnecting the cables wouldn't hurt since you're going to clean the terminals anyways. And typically, it's not that hard to hook them back up. It's one of those things, you know, you maybe take a picture of it, make a little diagram, put it someplace safe. If you feel you're going to forget how the cable should go, but it shouldn't be that hard. You know, sometimes there's little auxiliary wires for other things that might be hooked up that have to go back in the right spot. But, you know, take a picture or make a drawing, like I said. But disconnect it, you know, whether you're going to leave it in the RV or take it out. That way there's absolutely no draw on it whatsoever. You know, you make sure it's charged before you put it into storage, whether you leave it in the RV or not. You know, a lot of people recommend taking the batteries out of the RV. And that's a a personal decision. You know, that's something up to you. Even in cold climates, if a battery is stored, charged, fully charged, it won't freeze. You know, so if the battery is a good battery, there's nothing wrong with it, and it's fully charged, it won't freeze. But by all means, if you have a place to store it, a safe place to store it then take it out of the RV if that's what you want to do. Um, maybe it's one of those things better to be safe than sorry. So if you take it out of the RV, that's fine. Just don't set it on the cement. Although that does, you know, you can set batteries on the cement, but it's better to just have it someplace where it's out of the way. You know, if you set it on a piece of wood, that way if there's any leakage or something happens to the battery, it's not going to go right onto the concrete. You want it to stay a little bit warmer if you're going to store it inside. Well, You can leave it outside and let it freeze, but the inclination is to keep it a little bit warmer when we store it inside. But just find a safe place to store it inside. You don't want it next to a heat source or anything like that. You know, someplace just nondescript on a shelf or on a workbench, you know. Workbench is probably the best place if you have one. But anyway, um, so if you take it out, don't take it out. Either way, make sure that battery's charged. And then while it's stored, you want to charge it from time to time. If you don't have a trickle charger to just hook up to it and let it give it that trickle charge. So keeping it charged during storage is important too. So maybe every couple of months, charge up the battery if you're not going to put, hook it up to a trickle charger. And that way that battery will stay fresh. Batteries like having some uh, electricity going through them. They, um, they kind of thrive on that where, you know, that's where those solar panels come in. You see the small solar chargers or maintainers, you know, it just puts a little bit of amperage through that battery. It's not that much, but it's enough to just kind of keep that battery fresh and that battery won't go dead that way. So batteries like a little bit of electricity going through them, but they don't like a full charge, you know, as much power as possible because that can ruin a battery. But ideally using a trickle charger that will actually go into a float mode after the battery is charged is the best way to go. In other words, the trickle charger, if it's the right type, it's going to charge the battery. It gets fully charged. Then it'll regulate itself and it'll go into float mode as they call it, where it's not really doing into the battery other than, you know, um, watching it, observing, seeing if it needs to be charged again. Then if that battery needs to be charged again, maybe in a month or two weeks or whatever it is drops down to the, to the threshold that the uh, trickle charger kicks back on. Then it'll kick back on. Then after the battery's charged, it goes into float mode. And that's the best way to keep the battery going all, all the off season while you're not using it. And there's plenty of trickle chargers today on the market. Um, I'm going to have some on our, on the, on the website at radio, Arizona RV.com with links to purchase them at Amazon. You know, I've looked around, I've, found the deals on them. And the best chargers really, in my estimation, there's, you know, three different brands that I would go to for doing this. Um, Schumacher is one, although 
I think Battery Tinder and NoCo are the two that I would really go to. Those are the two I'm going to actually recommend. Schumacher is more of a, to me, it's more of a shop type battery charger. If you can have a full on battery charger, then I would go with that brand, Schumacher. Um, you know, it's, it's something professionals use. It's readily available. You can get them at a pretty decent price, although they do get expensive. You know, they're over a hundred bucks for the full on ones or probably even over 150, but you almost have to have two if you want, you know, depending on what you're doing, how often you work on your vehicles or what kind of do it yourself or you are, you know, I have just a big battery charger. I don't have a trickle charger, but I'm going to get one after doing this episode and really looking at this. Um, you know, it's kind of opened up my eyes a little bit about trickle chargers because they've changed so much. They've gotten better over the years. It's just like in two episodes ago, I talked about, um, RV battery chargers, you know, there were converters for RVs and they've changed a lot over the years. And so battery chargers have two and, um, battery tinder and NOCO both have ones that work with any type of battery you have other than lithium. They have some individual ones or separate ones, but they have battery chargers, you know, trickle chargers that will work with the AGM batteries, the gel cell batteries, the, the um, flooded batteries, lead acid, lead acid batteries, which flood and lead out is at lead acid are pretty much the same thing. I don't know. I can't talk today. Sorry about that. I have to learn to re speak. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I'll have the links on the website to the battery chargers. You don't have to buy them. You know, I have them going to Amazon. They have a good deal on them. I don't sell battery chargers per se. I don't have a source for them. So it's a pretty good deal. And of course with Amazon, it's always free shipping. So can't beat that. You don't have to buy these ones. Of course, you know, you can do a little shopping. Maybe that'll just get you going on your shopping trip, but at least you have a starting point, but NOCO and battery tender are the two brands that I would definitely recommend for the trickle chargers. And I would also recommend just doing the trickle charger thing, just having your batteries hooked up to a trickle charger during storage. And if you have two of them, NOCO has a pretty cool deal. They have a, um, a trickle charger. It's actually for two banks for two batteries and it's all molded into one battery charger. So it has two sets of cables coming out so you can charge up both batteries at the same time. And it monitors them, monitors them individually not together, but individually. So that makes it pretty sweet. If you have two batteries, you just hook them up and away you go. So that's, that simplifies it. So, you know, taking care of the battery is very important. You want to make sure that it's, you know, cleaned, charged and disconnected when you put it in storage and then have a means of making sure it stays charged during that storage period, whether it's three months, six months, two months, whatever it might be. And again, the trickle charger, I think, is the way to go. Now, also, along with battery storage and so forth, I get questions again, you know, the cold, the hot. Batteries in heat don't last nearly as long as batteries that are in the colder climates, although, you know, the cold can have its its bad effect on a battery. But if, like I said, if you can, bring it out of the cold if, you know, you really feel you need to. You don't have to as long as it's fully charged, but it might just be easier to bring it out of the cold. It's sometimes harder to work in the cold a little more motivated to go into a warmer garage or a workshop than out into the cold RV and, and deal with problems or wet or whatever it might be. But also the different types of batteries, there's AGM batteries, also called glass mat batteries. There's gel batteries or gel cell batteries. And there's the flooded batteries, which was what most people use in their RVs. You know, the gel cell batteries and the glass mat batteries, they get expensive. They do have their pluses um, or pros and cons, if you will. Most people use the flooded battery, a lead added, lead acid flooded battery, and they work pretty good. You know, they have a decent lifespan. You know, the only thing is they have a tendency of gassing, and so the gas and creates corrosion, and you get a little bit of leakage here and there. Not in all cases, but it does happen. And so sometimes that corrodes the terminals, corrodes other things. You know, the batteries get corroded up. So then you're maintaining it more, where gel cell batteries and glass mat batteries don't do that. They don't have the tendency of doing that. But they are different batteries and they get more expensive. So if you're going to change your batteries, if you're thinking about doing that, you know, you definitely want to do a little research and make sure that that's the option for you. I've tried them all. I've tried glass mat. I've tried gel cell and I've gone with, uh, the flooded batteries and I stick with flooded batteries. Um, there are special occasions. If there's a certain battery type I want, 
then it might be a glass mat battery, which is fine. Like Optima has some really nice batteries, you know, which I put in my four wheel drive vehicles. You know, so there's different applications where you might want to use a different battery, but for your typical deep cycle battery, the flooded batteries work pretty good. They're readily available. You can get them just about anywhere. So if you do have a problem, a battery dies, it doesn't become a big old ordeal to get one if you're out on the road. And speaking of that, stick with a brand. You know, I prefer interstate batteries. And that's what I sell. That's what's in all of our vehicles. And that's been that way for 30 or plus years for me. I've stuck with interstate batteries. That's the brand. Now, I'm not saying there's not other brands out there that aren't good. That's just the brand I recommend and choose to go with. Interstate batteries are all over the United States. There's dealers everywhere. You drive through a small town, you see a sign on an auto parts store, interstate batteries. You know, they're everywhere. So that's a good brand to go with in case you do have a warranty issue down the road. Although, you know, they generally last beyond the warranty period, so it's probably not going to be an issue. But going back with the same brand consistently, you know what you're getting, you know it works, you know you're happy with it. And also, you know, you have the glass mat batteries, the gel cell batteries, the flooded batteries. You also want to make sure your, your battery charger will work with that, that it's compatible. Not all batteries chargers work on all the different types of batteries, but the ones I mentioned like NOCO and Battery Tender and Schumacher, their battery chargers are designed to work with them. Um, each brand does something, or each model, I forget which now, but each model does maybe works on two, but not the other one. So you have to buy accordingly. And if you're not ever going to use a glass mat or gel cell battery, then it doesn't matter. You know, any battery charger will work fine. So those are the, the basic tips for storing your battery during the winter time. Winter time, um, you know, keeping it fully charged is probably the most important thing. Keeping it clean and making sure it stays charged during that storage period. And the if you're wondering, the battery chargers, the the um, trickle chargers, you know, they're in the fifty, sixty, seventy dollar range. They're not over the top expensive. And they're just good to have no matter what. Even when you're out RVing, you know, you're at a campground, something goes wrong with your batteries, at least you can charge it up, get things going. I mean, a trickle charger can sometimes even replace a, a battery altogether as far as just keeping your lights going. So it's a must-have. You know, most RVers have one, but if you don't, make sure you get one. And check out the website, RadioArizonaRV.com, where I'm going to have links to getting the batteries at pretty reasonable prices. So, you know, as the do-it-yourselfer, you got to stay motivated. You can't procrastinate. You have to stay on track. You know, make a checklist of the things that you need to get done to your RV and check them off. And make them a routine. Something like battery maintenance should be a routine. Other things that come up, we fix, repair, we move on. But battery maintenance is part of a routine. It's just like um, checking the air in the tires. We, we're supposed to do that every month. Make sure you're doing that, you know. So build your routine up around your RV and stick at it. Don't procrastinate. When we put things off, what I find is it costs more money later on. You put off a leak for a month, it turns into two months, it turns into six months, it turns into a year, then you have more damage. So don't procrastinate. And take care of your RV. It's a huge investment, and you enjoy using it. Your family enjoys using it. So make sure it's an investment that you care about and that it's safe and problem-free, or as problem-free as possible, because there will be problems on the road or in the parking lot. So do your best to just take care of it. So this is Eric Stark again with Radio Arizona RV. Check out our website, RadioArizonaRV.com, where we always have the show notes, more information, and, of course, the email sign-up. You know, if you want to sign up for the email, you're not going to get spam, but what you're going to get are emails about future episodes, little tips and tricks. So it's not going to be spam. It's going to be useful information. So again, thank you for listening. This is Eric Stark with Radio Arizona RV. You have yourselves a good day.